Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is a quick video demonstrating the process of taking a Clonezilla image of a computer. So this is my desktop down here on the left. We have Clonezilla connected as a live USB and we have a external um, hard drive up there. So we're just waiting for the computer to start booting. When it does, we're going to interrupt <coughs> the normal grub boot sequence. Um, my key is delete for some computers. It's on F8. And that'll allow us to <coughs> manually select um, manually select a one-time boot entry by clicking on F8. And I'm going to be able to boot into the, um, it's a SanDisk USB. So that's the only reason I remember it. So this is the one, um, this is SDA. And it's a 240 gigabyte uh, drive, an SSD drive, Kingston. That's what we're going to be backing up. Um, it contains the uh, Ubuntu. It's got two partitions. One was the operating system. I think there's a swap partition there as well. But basically, once we capture SDA, the first drive here, this is a backup, this is backup, and this is Windows. Um, this is Windows Boot Manager. So this is, this is how we boot into Clonezilla. Um, it gives you a variety of resolutions. I usually just go for the most basic one, so it's not to mess around with it too much. Um, I can get stuck on this next screen for a little while, so I'm just going to pause the video. Okay, so Clonezilla is continuing with its boot sequence. And uh, firstly, select the language, so that's obviously going to be English. Um, default option here is fine for don't touch key map. Um, this is the key map just for the actually giving the command, so it's basically fine. Um, you can at this point start Clonezilla or enter a shell environment. I'm just going to go for start Clonezilla, which will be the program. Now, this is the first important screen. Um, it's basically saying, do you want to work with uh, device to image or device to device? Now, if you do a device to device, it's going to literally, as it says here, work directly from a disk or a partition to a disk or partition. So it would literally copy over files with all the right, with all the right um, permissions, but it would literally create uh, every single file. If you do device to image, um, it's going to take the device, in this case, our first SSD, uh, SDA, and it's going to bundle those into a number of images. Um, so because I, this is just a backup, um, and I might also move this up to the cloud, it makes much more sense for me to bundle this, use the default option, and just uh, scoop out some images here. The other options here are um, for a remote destination. So you can actually directly in Clonezilla take a backup um, and push that up to a remote, uh, a remote server of some kind. Uh, you, can also, you can also start a server on the live USB. Those, that's the second to last option there. So basically you can use this program directly and uh, you know, in real time move a, uh, move a backup up to a remote server. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but I'm just going to go for the first option, which is device to image. Click on OK. Um, now, as I said, these are so you you have some of the nice options here in terms of where you're going to uh, put the image. And as I said, if you look at some of these options, you have an AWS S3 server, you have WebDAV, you have NFTS. Um, so you can basically and you has and you and you can connect over SSH. Um, so if you want to do any of those. Uh, you can do them, but I'm just using my, my local device because we're backing up to this trusty uh, one terabyte um, WWD, which is hooked up over just a USB connection here. So local, yes. Um, now it is telling me, I'm uh, just going to click yes here. That's fine. It's telling me to put in the USB device. Now it's scanned everything on my computer and just as, just as the computer does when it boots and goes into Grub, it's found that I have uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, is that right? Yeah, there was, sorry, the fifth one is actually the external WD elements. That's the external SSD and the first four are the four partitions on the computer. They're all Kingston. SDA is, as you said, my, the Linux uh, partition I'm backing up or the Linux drive I'm backing up. Then we have a backup SDB, SDC is another backup. I put, I actually put my Clonezilla ones internally there when I'm, when I'm running this internally. And then it's a 120 gigabytes. So if you're not sure, if you all have the same uh, company like me, they're all Kingston Drive, you can just look at the, uh, at the capacity there. You can see 240, 240, 480, 120. Um, so that's fine. And it's captured everything I need. So I can just exit out of this, control C. 
Now we're going to drop down to a command prompt and it's just going to run through this again. Now, uh, this is your mounting. Um, this is where you want to put it. So you have to be very, very careful here. So it says now we need to mount the device as home part image uh, so that we can read or read or save the image in home part image. So this is basically, and as it says here, no, you should not mount the partition you want to back up as home part image. So this is the destination, not the source. Um, so it's asking you where it wants to go. And of course that would be, um, it's SDF. That's the external hard drive. It's not, um, ah, there's only one partition. So this is, you have the drive and then the partition number. So there's only one partition on SDF, which is SDF one. I know it's my external hard drive just by looking at the uh, capacity here, 931, uh, gigabytes, uh, and it's an EXE4 file system. And it's an element, so I just have to, I just take and it's WT elements, which is just the brand name. Uh, so I just take this very very slowly to make sure because obviously if you mistake destination and source here, you run the risk of uh, basically losing all your data, which would not be fun. So I'm going to mount home part image where the backup's going to go on my external hard drive. Click OK to get to the next screen. Um, this will just take a second. It's, it's going to detect what is out, what is on the um, what is on the external hard drive. Okay, so it's run and it's had a look at what's on my uh, WD Elements backup drive. As you can see here, I've already organized it into a number of folders. I have my AW3 buckets. I have already got a, fo a folder for Clonezilla backups, some hosting stuff, virtual machines, etc. Um, so you can, if you can just choose to save to the root or you can go to, so I'm going to put this in Clonezilla backups, um, as I've already set up that folder and then I'm just going to click on done. Now you can do browse and you can create a subfolder and then save it in that, but I'm just going to put it in root, uh, and worry about moving it over later. So I'm going to click on done again. So now it's just confirming for us, um, that it's going to be putting, uh, it's putting home part image onto uh, dev SDF1 and the ext 4 file system, one terabyte, use, use 300 of it, and that's where it's going to mount home part image and press enter to confirm. So enter. <clears throat> okay, now we get the, to the next part of the operation. I'm going to click on beginner mode, which is, uh, which is more than sufficient. Um, it's going to just confirm what we want again. Um, if we want to save the local disk as an image or save local partitions as an image, if we go for option two, as I said, there's two partitions, at least on a default Linux system. Sometimes you can have as many as four. Uh, you can just save the entire disk to one image or you can do it by partition. Uh, I see no advantage in doing it uh, by partition. So I just do, just do the disk option and click on OK. Now you want to give it a name. So um, it defaults, by default, it populates here with, uh, uh, you know, the, just a little timestamp here. Um, I usually do it my own, so I just say um, home desktop. <clears throat> um, and I, I take these about, um, you know, every um, every three to six months or so. So um, I don't need to give it. I'm just going to put this in 070520, just so you can see. So just so I'm going to save this uh, directory. So this is going to create a directory within the Clonezilla backups in my WD um, elements, one terabyte external hard drive calls, home desktop 070520. And I'm just gonna click on okay. So now we have told it where it's gonna store and now we now we need to know which of our um, drives we're gonna establish a source. So it's saying choke, choose local disk with source. Um, our options are four because obviously we cannot choose the um, the disk that we're backing up to the destination as a source. So as I said, my, uh, the Linux partition I'm backing up is on SDA. So I'm just going to click on literally the space bar, um, in order to mark, and you can see the asterisk just populated there. So that marks as SDA as our source device. And just to confirm again, take this slowly. It's a 240 gigabyte uh, Kingston drive. Uh, and yes, that is the one I want. Um, before this, I went into accessories, um, disks in Linux and Ubuntu, uh, even though I know I've done this, you know, 20 times every single time, I just make sure that I'm backing up the right disk, um, that it's on SDA, because as I said, the partition, the 
potential for this is to literally ruin, destroy all your data. So you have to be very, very careful. So click on OK, and there's a little um, cursor, so it'll just work work again for a second. OK, so we're at the next screen. It's going to do a couple of final checks. Um, you can run an SFCK. That is to check the integrity of the file system um, before. Um, I've, I do this. I prefer to do this separately. So the default option is S. FSEK, which is skipping the FSEK is a low level command line interface just to check the basic integrity of the file system. So you can run it. Uh, you can also run an FSEK minus Y, which is a very, very dangerous command. It will forcibly attempt to repair all blocks, but in doing so, you can uh, you can really ruin a disk. So the default option SF SFCK is what probably most people will want to do. Um, and you can also check if the disk image is restorable. So the default option is yes. Um, that'll just do run through quickly to make sure that your backup can actually be used to restore, which is obviously, if it can't, it's kind of worthless. So uh, sometimes, to be honest, to save time, I actually skip this. I trust that it's done a good job. I'm going to go for yes on this occasion. Um, and you can also encrypt the image. Uh, the default is not to encrypt or you can do encryption. So... Um, you know, if you're storing this locally, um, you might want to encrypt this. Um, and if you're putting it up on, on the cloud, uh, or you can do the encryption later before you push it up somewhere, uh, as opposed to doing it on the fly. So I'm not going to encrypt this backup. Um, I'm just going to go for the OK option. Finally, you can uh, select what to do when the utility is done its job. Um, so I'm just going to do choose or you can automatically shut down. And if you do shut down, you just need, you know, I'm just going to do shut down so I can just see that when the screen is turned off, um, the uh, backup is generated. That's it. Click on OK. Um, and now we're ready, we're ready to go, basically. Um, it gives you also the commands so if you want to go into, go into advanced mode in the future um, and export this. You can literally copy the command that all this kind of low-level GUI generated for us. You can see all the various options I put in here. Power off, uh, minus SFCK, all the operators, including the backup name, are literally spelled out there. So you could just, uh, um, as it says, the command is also saved as this file for later use if necessary. And you can check there. And uh, if you want to just run that, this, this can expedite running the same backups over and over again. Uh, press enter to continue, enter to continue. Um, and that's basically it. You'll get one final confirmation. And this is, this is where you should do your very, very final check because this is the last moment that you have to, uh, to check everything is correct before you go ahead and run this. So just double, just triple checking. Um, we are backing up, um, SDA over here containing two partitions, a little SDA 1512, uh, boot partition. Uh, in VFAT format and a larger 223 EXT. And yes, SDA is where my Ubuntu is. And we're mounting this to home part image. Uh, so it's going to create a, um, that uh, directory in the Clonezilla backups folder that we looked at in, uh, in this external hard drive. And that's it. Click yes to run. Yes to run. And um, now it's in progress. So once you get to the screen, it's running. Um, this, the very, very first block that will run will be that, uh, that small. Uh, so don't get too excited. It was only, uh, it was only a tiny file system. Um, and the longer process will be backing up, um, <coughs> backing up the actual main partition. So, um, you can see some, some statistics here. Once it's going to get to the second partition, we'll get a more accurate idea. You'll get a more accurate idea of how long it's actually going to take to run. Um, it's not particularly long if you're looking at a, um, you know, if you're looking at a, uh, ext4, uh, file system of, you know, 220. Uh, it also depends on, uh, of course, the, um, whether your, you know, whether your external hard drive is connected over USB 3 or USB 2. The data transfer speeds on USB 3 are obviously quicker. Um, so this cabling, I'm looking at my extension and I, I'm hoping it's, uh, USB 3. But in any event, it shouldn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes just to generate the whole uh, backup process here. So we've moved on from the first stage, um, that initial uh, partition. Now we're actually running the main one. So you can see now that it is running this backup at 8 gigabits, gigabytes per minute. 
Um, and it's just kind of here calculating the elapsed time and uh, the total remaining time you can see is building at the moment. It's in the region of like, I'd say probably half an hour. You have your total date, total uh, block process and your total block process over here. Sorry, total data block and total block in percentages in their building. So I'm just going to again pause the video and uh, we will uh, just uh, take a quick look once this has completely finished running um, just to verify that the, that the backup has been uh, created correctly. Okay, so just to finish off the uh, demonstration of Clonezilla working to uh, back up the um, an, a drive, an SSD drive on my, my Linux drive. So basically the process ran, took about 20 minutes in total to get that onto the external uh, WD element. So I'm now in, uh, in, in my desktop and I'm just gonna now connect the drive. So give it a second to recognize if it does. I'm just spinning up. And if we see, we have the Clonezilla backups uh, folder that I created here, and uh, this is the uh, this is the the process that ran the desktop 070520. Um, and as you can see, um, that's basically how it looks. So in terms of size, uh, just using this, it is 68 gigabytes, and uh, it's an image. So basically, it has um, you know it's broken the uh, the entire drive into these various images and I went through the restore process that took an additional 15 minutes approximately to run on this uh, on this image so in total probably a 45 minute process so if you are in a rush uh, that's about how long this takes to, to back up a 225 gigabit uh, but it produced 68 uh, 68 gigabytes in roughly in terms of the actual images that it saved onto this Thanks for watching. Uh, any uh, questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to get in touch. My website is at danielrosehill with two l's dot co dot a l.